It's time for the One Bar and Lepica Show, bringing you anything and everything Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to professional football. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepica Show. I am Lepicus today talking about NFL Network Cynthia Freeland and her projection of the Minnesota Vikings record in 2020. Uh, for you, though, for those of you who are not familiar with Cynthia Freeland, she is the NFL Network analytics expert. You see her a lot on NFL Network, especially the week leading up to uh, the games. Uh, she kind of predicts how people are going to end up doing in the games, looking at all the analytics prior, factoring injuries, weather conditions, and crap like that. She definitely knows her shit. So uh, if you don't follow her, check her out. Um, a lot of good information there, especially if you're you know, looking to make a fan duel lineup or something like that. But anyway, Cynthia Freeland looked at all the teams, projected their wins over the course of the season, and for the Minnesota Vikings, she came up with 8.9 wins on the season. Um, okay, so is that a fair number? Is that low? Is that high? Well, um, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but right now let's just see why she might be right and why she may be wrong. Uh, 8.9 wins. Okay, you can't really have 8.9, so we'll round it up to 9. 9 wins. Okay? Why she could be right? Why would the Vikings only have 9 wins? Well, offensive line could definitely be an issue this year. We've already seen plenty of worry come out of this unit in the uh, practice game, even throughout all of training camp, really. Um, Kirk Cousins took like 3 sacks in that thing where they you know, whistled at that before he was hit. He had plenty of pressures. Um, a lot of different players are getting pressure on the quarterback in camp, and obviously you're not going to you know, keep them clean every single time. But this is an area that doesn't seem like it's really improved over the course of the offseason. Uh, you got Riley Reef back at left tackle, Brian O'Neill back at right, uh, Garrett Bradbury back at center, and you got two, uh, I guess I should, I should say new guards, but you got Dakota Dozier stepping up, who's le- likely going to be your left starting left guard, and Pat Elfine kicking over to the right. Um, I'm sorry, if you stink, it doesn't matter if you're on the left or right side. That smell will follow you wherever you go. So I don't think the right guard spot's going to be any better this year. Um, and so far, this this line hasn't really looked any better. Um, and that could be definitely something that carries off into the season. So that is definitely a reason why the Vikings may only have nine wins on the year. Another factor is if Daniel Hunter doesn't play. He's been out with a hamstring tweak now for like 13 days. Um, Vikings keep saying it's just this... They're being cautious about this injury, not wanting him to rush back onto the field. Maybe that's true, but there just seems like to be some smoke here, and I wonder if this is contract-related. And if it does, for some reason, this injury lingers into the season, that will definitely hurt the Vikings' pass rush. Another issue why she could be right with the Vikings only having nine wins is this young group of cornerbacks could struggle. And there's been nothing really in camp that gives us the feeling that they will struggle. They've been actually probably better than expected as a whole. Uh, especially Cam Dancer, Jeff Gladney getting in there already uh, with the ones rotating in. I think it's going to be a lot of guys in and out. So, um, again, that can all change when the games start counting. They may not be, pre- be prepared for what other offenses are going to do, shifts they may make, ways they may attack the defense. Um, that can definitely catch these young guys off guard, so that could be an area that struggles. And another issue that could arise here is just the Vikings' run defense could be a major issue all year long. Um Shamar Stefan in the middle. Who knows who's going to play three tech if Adenabo moves inside, if it's uh, Jaleel Johnson, if it's Armand Watts, James Lynch, uh, Jalen Holmes. Who knows? Um, Stefan, he struggled against stuff in the run a year ago. We all hope he's better. Uh, maybe Armand Watts can come in and make that spot a little bit better too. But at this point, without Michael Pierce there, with with no Linval Joseph, the Vikings' run defense could definitely be an issue and a reason why they lose more games than many of us figure they will this season. All right, so those are reasons why Cynthia may be wrong. Let's look at some reasons why... Ah, oh, scratch that, reverse it. Those are reasons why she could be right. Here's some reasons why she might be wrong. Um, the Yannick Ngakwe addition, if he is definitely on the field with uh, Daniel Hunter and Hunter is not out, that pass rushing combination is going to be just dominating... Uh, I mean, passers aren't going to have any time to scan the field, any time to get the ball out. They're going to have constant guys up in their face. Teams aren't going to be able to double-team both these guys. One guy might see a chip. The other guy is going to be free one-on-one. Uh, two elite pass rushers is going to be huge for this defense. It's going to help the young corners out, help the secondary as a whole out, and um, 
quarterbacks just aren't going to have a lot of time with those two guys bearing down on them every single play. And you put Odenobo in the middle or rotate him in there. Um, that is a trifecta of pressure. Uh, another reason why she could be wrong is Jefferson, just Justin Jefferson and BC Johnson. Uh, they can make up for the loss of Stephon Diggs. Uh, they're not, I'm not saying these players are Stephon Diggs, and I'm not going to take away what he brought to the Vikings offense uh, this year or what he could potentially bring to Buffalo. But uh, Jefferson has already shown plenty of flashes in camp, making some tough catches over the middle, uh, working on the outside, running great routes. Seems to be the real deal. BC Johnson has only gotten better. He's kind of holding on the number two job, fending off Jefferson, who's having a hell of a camp. So the Vikings potentially have two um, much improved weapons uh, next to Adam Thielen uh, than they maybe have, had expected when they traded away Diggs. So I think the passing game should continue to roll for Kirk Cousins. Speaking of the passing game, another weapon that they have, another reason why Ole Miss Freeland could be wrong is uh, because Irv Smith, he's going to have a much bigger role. He's ready to bust out. He's already done it in, in practice on almost a daily basis, making big plays. Um, Gary Kubiak is going to get this guy isolated. He's going to get him open, get him on mismatches, and uh, he's he's just destined for a huge season. So I think Irv Smith will definitely be a reason why she is wrong with that nine-win projection, a little bit under nine wins. And another thing, which I don't think enough people are talking about, is the Vikings special teams could be the best we've seen in a long time. Dan Bailey is back, uh, coming off a 90... Wow, high 90% kicking percentage last year. He's supposedly hit everything in camp this year. He's got his holder returning and Britton Colquitt. Uh, Colquitt, again, um, solid last year. Punted, punted us out of some really bad field position. Um, he'll be back. Bailey back. Austin cutting back your long snapper. That's the first time in years the Vikings have actually had all three facets of their punt kick game returning. You know, last couple of years we've had rotating doors. Um, just before the season starts, a new phase comes in, and all of a sudden, our day one, our week one punter is a guy who was in on the roster a week ago. That will not be the case this year. We will be set in stone at those positions. And also, I think uh, KJ Osborne gives us, you know, potentially a, a dynamite return man. Um, whether it's as a punt returner, a kick returner, he might need a little, you know, seasoning, uh, get a few live reps in before he kind of finds his niche there. But um, last year we went in there with Chad Beebe who couldn't hang on to a damn punt. Amir Abdullah is Amir Abdullah. He might have a couple decent returns, but you also got to hold your breath every time he brings it back because he could fumble. So, um, and the other thing, you look at all these gunners we have. I mean, I don't know if Abdullah is going to make the team, but he was a hell of a gunner on special teams. Chris Boyd's a hell of a gunner. You got guys like Josh Metellus. Um, if Hardy Nickerson makes the team, Troy Die, Stephen Parker, these guys can all be special teams demons. So this team is just loaded with guys who can fly down the field, make that hit. Uh, so I think coverage will be better. Punting will be just as good as it was last year, and field goals should also be solid. So and return game will be better. So the Vikings special teams could, you know, give them another win or two just with the field position they could create. Um, so overall. I do think she's a little low with that 8.9 rate, you know, wins. I think the Vikings are more like a 10-win a team this year. And that's not just my purple parts flopping out in the wind here. I do think they are have the potential to, to be that good. Well, there is, you know, definitely some concerns that we mentioned. But I think 10 wins is more is more uh, on the lines of what we should expect from our Vikings this year. So um, that's all I got for this episode of the One Bar and Lepiga Show. And please, for God's sakes, always keep your skull in your hole.